I have a Toyota VVT, could be a VVTi um, camshaft in the vise here. Uh, came out of a four cylinder, out of a Corolla or something. Um, I just got the four bolts out of the top, those four holes you can see. And uh, it was some wonky five star bit I've never seen before. Here's the, uh, here's the other cam. You can kinda, um, let me wipe off my hands here. You can kinda see it's a, um, it's a five star bit uh, bolt, sorry. I don't have anything like that. I only have, well, Torx and, you know, Allen keys and I tried everything. I tried a straight blade. I I tried the Torx. The Torx are six point, I believe. Allen keys are six point. I couldn't find a straight blade that would get it out. It just kept popping out. I even tried making a bit out of a bolt. That didn't work very well, so I just had to bite the bullet and drill out those four bolts there. Um, so I've basically just taken off the top. I tried to figure out, let me focus here, make sure we're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I have taken it apart. I just took the top off just to see what was in there. Uh, so if you're familiar with VVTi, you'll know that as the engine is turning, the, uh, the computer knows you know, the RPM of the engine and the throttle uh, throttle plate position and it can kind of gauge what you're trying to do and it can optimize the efficiency and the power of the motor by adjusting the position of the cam gear in relation to the cam. So as your engine's turning, this whole thing can, can rotate and uh, change the timing of I believe both cams actually, because the exhaust cam looks the same. It's got the same sort of beefy, I mean this is, you know, an inch and a quarter thick. Um, so you can see here, there's the four holes that the bolts went through. There's these orange blocks. I'm sure that's kind of like a hardened plastic so that it's not metal on metal. Uh, although everything is lubricated in here, you know, I'm sure they have to have something in there. So. Um, so there's never metal on metal contact. So I have taken it apart like I said and there's sort of a pin here that's spring loaded that doesn't quite let it turn. So I'm gonna pop that that pin out if I can. I got it, there we go. You can see it's kind of uh, tapered. I'll show you where that goes in a second. It's spring loaded. I don't fully understand what that does exactly. I think it just locates the maximum position that this can go to. So now that that pins out, you can kind of see how much of a range um, it can actually change the timing. I mean, from here it's one, two, three, almost four teeth. It can adjust it as you're driving. These are, these are changing all the time, depending, well, not all the time, but you know, in the correct rev range, they're, they're, they're moving around and they're changing depending on how hard you're pushing the gas and other conditions, I'm sure. I don't know everything about this system. From what I can see, these, these uh, openings can either fill with oil to create a very strong hydraulic pressure to keep them in a certain position, or they can empty with oil, empty of oil. I don't know. Somebody can probably correct me on that. Um, so I'm going to slide everything apart. These orange blocks are going to come out, but that's no big deal. I don't really care. So, there we go. Making a mess. So you can see that these, uh, these orange blocks have like a, a steel band in there. I'm sure it's spring steel, so it always holds that springiness, but that, I guess that just keeps everything, keeps those blocks pressed against you know, the metal that it's supposed to be pressed against. I'm gonna take all those out. It's kind of a pain in the ass. There we go. Makes everything easier to put back together. So, 
There's a pin here on this uh, this side of it that uh, well I can actually spin around and show you now. It goes into this this little oval hole here. So that was over here. I'll put everything back together the way it was. There's that pin. Goes into there. So you can see now that it's loose now that those orange blocks are gone. But uh, so there's the motion that that it can control. This plate goes back on. There's dots. There's a dot on the top and a dot beside this bolt that you probably can't see, but that's what lines it up. So as you're as you're driving, this whole thing is is being adjusted. It's pretty cool actually. Um, so that pin that I took out earlier, this guy here, I'll, t I'll move it over so you can see it. There's a, there's a hole there. So this pin would go in here, but uh, it would fit right into that, that hole. So I'll put that back in to show you. It pretty much locks it dead. Uh, what was I using before? There it is. So if you push it all the way down, there's really not much play there. I'm sure that's very important. And without the spring, it just pops up by itself. So you can kind of see. Come on. There we go. So that's it all the way down. And if I just rotate it a bit, that pin will eventually pop up. So that's the idea of the spring, I suppose. The spring, uh, uh, it would be that way. So the spring presses up against this plate and it holds that pin down. Like I said, I don't fully understand it, uh, the system. Maybe somebody else who knows more can chime in about that. But anyway, that's the, uh, I believe, yeah, this is the intake. The intake cam. I'll, uh, I'll take this out of the vise. So I can kind of put it back together, I think. Oh man. I gotta find that slot again for the pin. This way, yeah. So once it's all back together, you can kind of see the, the size of everything. That's how, that's how big that portion is on the end of the cam. But, uh, Yeah, it says ZR1, LQJ on it, uh, 15. It says ZR1 again on this side. Don't know what those codes mean, but uh, there you have it. That's the, uh, that's the intake cam. Maybe I'll shoot another video of the exhaust one. Thanks for watching.